Welcome back to another Infinite Flight tutorial. In this video, I'll take you through the F-18 Super Hornet new pilot orientation. Before we get started, let's cover some administrative items. Flying the F-18 on speed and on profile relies heavily on angle of attack or AOA versus pitch. The angle of attack is the angle at which the wing's airfoil meets the relative wind. Simply put, it's the difference between where the wing is pointed and where it's going. I recommend you configure your AOA on the information panel down below. You can even create a special configuration for fighter jets with things like G-forces and AOA. In this tutorial, you may hear mill and max power referenced. Mill power is 75% throttle and is the threshold before the afterburner is lit. Max power will refer to 100% power with afterburner. Let's talk expert server rules. Fighter jets on the expert server must not exceed 350 knots indicated below 10,000 feet while under ATC control. A good practice outside of that single rule is to limit speed to 250 knots in congested commercial airspace and avoid exceeding Mach 1 at cruise along busy routes. Now let's suit up and fly. The F-18 at light weights will begin taxiing on its own, though a small bump in power will get us rolling at 50% weight today. At idle power, the F-18 will maintain speeds on the ground. Speed should not exceed 8 knots for 90 degree turns and 20 knots on straightaways. Do you need to fit in a tight space like a sunshade? Try folding up your wings. For today's takeoff, we'll be using max power with afterburner and the standard takeoff configuration of half flaps. I recommend 10 to 20% positive trim as well. Many takeoffs will be done with mill power, especially at lower weights or when a conservative climb out is planned below 250 knots. Things will happen fast during takeoff, so you may need to practice this sequence a few times. First, we line up, set our brakes, increase the mill power of 75%, and release brakes. Now max power is set, our speed is alive, and I'm gently rotating my device back at 126 knots. Don't forget the crosswind inputs if you need it. Let the aircraft become airborne by about 145 knots, and immediately after rotation, we'll retract our gear, followed by flaps. At the departure end, we reduce the mill power and allow our speed to increase to a climb speed of 350 knots. Multiple different power settings can be used for your climb depending on desired speed, climb rate, and aircraft weight. Try experimenting with 75, 65, and even 50% as you continue pitching for 350 knots indicated. The F-18 Super Hornet typically cruises below 40,000 feet while operating with fuel for range or a heavy combat load. Speeds vary drastically based on operational needs, however most profiles for optimum cruise are between Mach 0.75 and 0.85. For max range, you should aim for an AOA of 3 degrees and no faster than Mach 0.85. Max endurance or flight time calls for a cruise speed that can give you an AOA of 4 degrees. It's time to return to base. I've entered the pattern at 1,500 feet above airport elevation for a touch and go. A beam the touchdown zone and below 250 knots will go gear down and flaps full. The speed brakes are very effective if you need help slowing down to 250. As we make our base and final turn, allow the nose up attitude to bleed speed off as we slow to a final approach speed of roughly 140 knots, or a speed that gives you an AOA of 8 degrees. Unlike airliners, we'll keep our throttle in all the way to touchdown and avoid flaring. Place your flight path vector on the runway numbers to spot land right on the touchdown zone. As we cross the threshold, we stay on speed, on profile, and make any crosswind inputs to align on the center line just before touchdown. The Super Hornet is designed for hard landings in the demanding environment on an aircraft carrier, so don't worry about greasing it. 800 feet per minute is a standard landing descent rate. After touchdown, I immediately apply mill power, fly away, retract my gear, flaps, and re-enter the pattern. Our final landing of the day will be a carrier landing by catching the simulated cable found at military bases all over the world. Much like before, we set up on final, on speed, on profile, and lower our resting hook found in the systems menu. To catch the cable, you must touch down plus or minus 100 feet from the touchdown zone. Aim just beyond the runway numbers, don't flare, and firmly set it down right on your spot. To taxi away, raise your hook, apply power, and exit the runway. You've successfully completed the Super Hornet orientation. Remember, it's all about having fun, too. Try a formation flight with friends, practice a Blue Angel routine, or just go ripping through the Grand Canyon. Stay sharp, and I'll see you in the next one.